how do we get, say, 600,000 people to collaborate on solving a problem together? It's incredibly complex. That is where we need the technology to step in and create that kind of platform that allows people to communicate and talk. The, the great opportunity is, of course, we know exactly who's talking to whom at what time and we can pull that data out. And, and if we can analyze this in a way that, where we can really test what kind of collaboration is leading to the best kind of end results that is really solving the challenge that we set up in the beginning, we can start operating in a much smarter way in the way that we look at social challenges like um, poverty, like the refugee crisis, but also very local problems, um, looking at how do we make more livable cities, how do we increase happiness in cities. Um, and this was really my route into technology. I was allowed by Stanford to, to start the Peace Innovation Lab here and, and start bringing the, the social innovation and social entrepreneurship community together with the tech and the startup scene here um, in order to build bridges again and to share knowledge, um, do workshops on a monthly basis where we are looking at what kind of local challenges can, can we solve because most people might think that Berlin is a very peaceful society but if you look at homelessness, if you look at uh, challenges like obesity, um, depression, there's plenty of, of issues that we can tackle in order to, to make a, a happier society or a happier city to live in, and this is what we wanted to tackle. Facebook is a perfect example of how you can build digital communities and how you can bring people together across borders um, and break down borders, because in, in an online world, uh, where we draw, you know, national border lines is, is not that evident. I mean, there's, there's still divides online and we can certainly work on those, but I think it, it's wonderful to see people coming together because of shared interests, and I think we can do that online. Um, but again, it, it's the very early days of the internet. I think we, we haven't even started to really see what this could become. I think movements like Bitcoin and, and, and really challenging the way that, that our financial systems are operating, um, it's tremendously in interesting. For me, what I'm really trying to work at is, is to see, okay, the internet has so many opportunities, but at the moment it's, it's only a selected few people who are part of that, and, and a lot of that would be young males who might be very privileged and sitting in the major cities in, in, in Silicon Valley or in, in Europe, and I think that we need to educate a lot more people. I think programming should certainly be part of the curriculum like mathematics have been for, for a long time. Um, because more people need to be part of that kind of conversation and, and need to influence and understand how society online could be working. And, and for me, bringing more people into that conversation is important. So that is why we started Ready School, is, is to help train and, and help educate and, and make people understand um, how they can get jobs or how they can be responsible citizens in, in an online environment. So for me, what, what I would love to see is, is that we're able to find a way that we can educate, especially people sitting inside who are stuck in refugee camps, say in Jordan, in Satari, to, to understand how they could be doing jobs online, because right now they're stuck, but if they have internet access, um, if we can help them have laptops, um, even you could be doing work um, just through your smartphone as a way to take care of yourself, earn money and, and have jobs, I think that would make a, make a huge difference. So we started officially with 42 students in February 2016. Um, since then we've had, I believe, four semesters, um, which means that we now have around 250 students who have been through the program. We currently have about 130 students who are studying with us spread across 10 different courses. So, so the direct impact that we've had on lives and, and, and encouraging people to study and, and, and keep improving themselves and training their skills, um, that is one part of it. But we can also see when we, when we ask our alumni, what are you doing now? We can see that um, about 40% have either landed a paid job or a paid internship. 30% are back at university studying. Um, and the last 30% are continuing to taking courses with us, improving their skills and improving their network. So I think those numbers are really quite significant and I think that's 
that is what we want to see more of, and, and not just in Berlin, but we're looking at scaling right now into other German cities, starting with, with Munich, but also looking at how could we take the, the ready school model and, and help in places like Jordan. Um, could we imagine a, a ready school in Iraq helping the refugees there get, get jobs as well? But my strategy all along has been nail it before you scale it. So let's make sure that we know what we're doing. Let's make sure that it's a high quality product. When we know what the dynamics are, that it's also financially sustainable, then it's at the right time to scale. And we're just there, there now, which makes the future very exciting. We have um, Heba and Hadir, two of our Egyptian female students, um, who came to us and were really quite shy and, and started studying with us. And then they have now become mentors and actually teaching um, digital skills to elderly people, so Germans who are struggling to know how to, to use their mobile phones. So once a week they go and, and they work with all these um, um, like people in the 70s and 80s. And, and you can just see how they have become so proud and so confident. And the last thing that, that they showed me was that they have created this like 70 page curriculum to teach other women how to use uh, the computers because they realize that there's a lot of female refugees who have never, you know, they don't have a, an email account, they don't know how to use Word and, and therefore don't know how to do online banking, they don't know how to get an appointment with the doctor online and, and these two girls, sisters, have just decided this is just not good enough. So they have created this curriculum, printed it out, it's in four languages and we never asked them to do it. They just saw the opportunity, they saw that there was a need and then they, they set out to do it. And I think it's just tremendous to see that and, and I really like this approach and it's what we're trying to install in all our students is pay it forward, help others and, and only that way we can really, you know, get to everyone.